Hello again, everybody. This is Brother Chooch. Want to just give you a little bit of my thoughts and feedback on this video. If you haven't watched the first couple videos of this series, I would strongly suggest you do so, so that this video and what I'm saying right now makes a little bit more sense. Probably be one final video in this series, and that's going to tackle the question of in the Psalms, are we seeing pictures, hints, or descriptions of the tribulation period perhaps happening in 2019-2020 uh, going to about 2026? Well, that will be for our next video, but I wanted to give you some of my thoughts on this particular video as we have gone through the years of 1993 to 2018. Now if you notice when you watched uh, the two other videos coupled with this one that you will notice that not every year is covered. And in fact one of the basis why I made this video in the first place is because it's based on J.R. Church's hidden prophecy in the Psalms and he was the one who wrote a book that claimed that the year, the Gregorian year, matches up with the psalm number, or the, or the psalm chapter. Some people don't like to call it chapters, and that's understandable. So when we look at, let's say, again, Psalm 1, that would correlate with the year 1901. When we look at Psalm 48, that should correlate with what happened in 1948. And J.R. Church makes it clear that he's looking at it through the perspective of the Jewish lens, what happened to Israel during those particular years. Now, I, I think I could say pretty confidently, uh, unlike J.R. Church, that I do not see every single psalm matching up with every single year. So I, I'm ruling that out as, as um, that's not the case. However, I can't completely rule out the argument that some of the psalm numbers seem to match up with what happened in that particular year. And that's where I was asking people who subscribe to this channel, also those who visit this channel watching this series, for you to be the judge and you to decide, is there validity in this? Or is this coincidental? Uh, we're looking and seeing things that really are not there. Because I am not trying to convince you either way. I'm giving you my feedback. And I respect your comments that also, um, to me, are important. So anyways, without further ado, let's look at this particular video. And I just want to talk starting in 1993 um, <clears throat> there is in verse 3 of, of Psalm 93 mentioning of floods matter of fact the word flood or floods uh, is mentioned three times and interestingly enough in in 1993 in the United States the great flood, uh, of the Mississippi River, which overflowed and created vast damage, occurred. Now, that sounds pretty interesting. But if you stop and think about, especially J.R. Church, it was really looking at the psalm numbers in regards to what happened in the nation of Israel. As far as I know on my own personal research, I did not see that uh, Israel itself had any overwhelming issues with too much rain or floods. But because this happened in America, I thought 1993 uh, and the flood of 1993 Mississippi River still should have been in here just because uh, there is that correlation. But those who are skeptical of that, you know, there's no correlation between the psalm and what happened in that year, 
you could certainly make the argument like, okay, well, you know, there weren't great floods in Israel that year, so I think you're stretching things a bit. I'll, I'll accept that. <clears throat> now, let me just make note that in J.R. Church's book, who uh, wrote this book and published it in 1986, <clears throat> excuse me, was already... Um, thinking that from 1988 to uh, 19, let's see, eight, uh, 94 or so would be the tribulation period based on his interpretation of the Psalms. 19, uh, the 88th Psalm is probably the gloomiest Psalm in all the, all the Psalms. And obviously we're way past that. Uh, the tribulation period did not happen in 1988, and so his book ends because it was published in 1986. So he he speculated that the tribulation period would happen in the late 80s into the nine early 90s, mid 90s, and then we'd be in the millennial reign. Well, because of this, um, this particular video, at least, I've had to use my own. Um, you know, analysis of the Psalms and looking at what happened in Israel during those years and see if I came across any verses that seem to have um, relevancy of what actually occurred and what is being spoken in the Psalm. So this is what I'm giving you. Now, keep in mind that I think J.R. Church lived and then he he, he died, um, I don't, I want to say 2010s in that area. And so I think he mentioned in one of his broadcasts that um, how Psalm 93 did relate to the floods in, in America. So it's not like, just because he wrote his book, it's, it's you know, he, he lived um, a few decades still past that and had comments about the Psalms. But I will say this, is that in this grouping, this third video, uh, this was probably the most challenging because the onus kind of fell on me to do the work. I couldn't go to JR's, JR Church's book and say, okay, he said this for 93, he said this for 2001, blah, 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 blah. So this is, you know, and I did get a little bit of feedback from um, the community, the Thinking Out Loud community, uh, so that was helpful because I think a point or two was brought to my attention. But again, this is this is my my tr my effort at trying to see if there was a connection. Anyways, so 93, there's 93 and 94. Uh, this seemed pretty interesting. Is a 94 uh, Psalm 94 verse five? It says, "They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage." Now, so if you were having a conversation with somebody and they said, um, Break your people. Somebody was broken in pieces. Well, you would say, well, what happened? Did they explode or was there a bomb or something? And sure enough, in 94, in Israel, there were several suicide bombers or bombs that were detonated that created problems and deaths. Uh, a Fula suicide bomb occurred in 84. Hadera Central Station suicide bomb bus station. The Israel Embassy was bombed in London. The, the Zengoff Street bus bombing occurred in 94. And there was even a uh, bicycle bombing in Netzerim Junction uh, that took place in 94. So I thought that that was pretty significant. Then I had to jump all the way to the year 2000. So you're talking about a good five, six years now where of Psalms, I, I couldn't see any any correlation between what was being said in the Psalm and what actually happened in Israel or for the world for that, for that part. Just because it turned into the year 2000 and what that would correlate to Psalm 100, I just thought that maybe... Verses 3 and 4 seem to be uh, something that may be related to 
God speaking to Israel in regards to entering into a new century has the flavor of hope in him leading his pasture, entering into his gates with thanksgiving, courts with praise, bless his name. Obviously, the whole world was pretty celebratory, entering into a new century. Now, 9-11, and I'm not saying that there was a connection with Israel or the Jews, but 9-11 in 2001 shook up the world to its very core. And being a conspiracy theorist, uh, I don't believe that but what happened to the Twin Towers and what happened in 9-11 was exactly what the media told us it was. I believe that there was deceit. Uh, I believe it very much well could have been an inside job. And so when I read in Psalm 101, verse 7, a warning that God has in the psalm of those who work at the seat shall not dwell in his house, and though that tell lies shall not tarry in my sight, and that he will destroy the wicked of the land and cut off all the wicked doers of the city of God. I I found that relative to what occurred that year. And almost wondering if the Lord allowed that to be in Psalm 101 because there was such a great deceit that took place in the year 2001 with 9-11. That's my hypothesis, folks. You could disagree with me, but that's where uh, what where my thinking was going. Now, this one's kind of a wacky one, but in 2008, and you look at Psalm 108, you have, and this is um, a, a, a subscriber to the channel brought this to my attention. I wasn't aware of it, but in Psalm 108, 9, it talks about how over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Well, when, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, December 14, 2008, when President George W. Bush at the time was in a Iraqi press conference, I believe that the new government was put into place and the supposed president of Iraq was there, uh, a journalist from Iraq threw both his shoes, wailed it at President Bush's head, and uh, President Bush, with the uh, the humor that he had, I don't agree he, he was that great a president, but he says all he knows is that it was a, a size 10. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But anyways, he didn't get hit. He ducked in time. But because she was mentioned in Psalm 108, and that was something that occurred in 2008, I thought it was worthy of being mentioned again you could say well what does that have to do with israel well iraq is in the middle east and if something of significance is going on with a country in the middle east I, i'm sure israel is affected in some way or or is least worthy of mentioning in the year 2012 that would relate to psalm 112 um there was an operation in israel and it was called Operation Pillar of Defense. It was an eight-day military campaign. At the time, uh, Gaza was sending rocket fire into Israel. And um, Israel retaliated with, with, a lot of, with a lot of bombing and an attack. And I just thought that if you were to see a connection there in Psalm 112, 6, 7, and 8... Um, talks again about the security that God's giving uh, Israel almost like a promise like you won't be moved forever um, the righteous will be in everlasting remembrance don't be afraid of evil tidings um, trust in the Lord his heart is established you you shall not be afraid you will see his this until he sees his desire upon his enemies so it's almost like a little encouragement to israel like don't get disgruntled don't be discouraged about your enemies who are doing all this stuff towards you i'm at i'm going to take care of them trust in me and so i i saw something that in there that felt like there was a connection you could disagree of course but that's my interpretation Okay, so in 2017, I think we all agree that it was highly significant that President Trump recognized Israel as their capital. 
And in 2017, I mean Psalms 117, we see a bit of a praise up to the Lord. This is the, actually the shortest psalm in uh, in all the psalms. And it's just two verses, that's all. And it talks about praising the Lord, all ye nations, all these people. A bit of a celebration, especially if you're pro-Israel, pro-Jerusalem. Uh, it speaks of the Lord's merciful kindness towards them and the the Lord's truth enduring forever and praise the Lord. So there was a time of great praise in Israel and for those, again, who are, loved the nation of Israel when Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. In 2018, if you remember, Prime Minister Ben Netanyahu uh, went on is Israeli TV with all these files and information that he said that his uh, intelligence had captured over 100,000 documents detailing the extent of Iran's nuclear program. Now, Iran obviously said this was all propaganda and not legit, but uh, it was significant. In, in fact, you know, our United States reacted to this uh to iran in verse 7 of psalm 118 says the lord is on my side as my helper i shall look and tramp on those who hate me so obviously iran absolutely loathes and hates israel and yet uh, the lord continues to serve as a helper he, he allowed these documents to be captured brought back to israel and then last but not least, I thought that uh, just kind of an eerie sort of foreboding warning in Psalm 118, 10, 11, and 12 uh, of the state Israel currently is in and what the Lord is planning on doing. Israel is currently surrounded by their enemies. They're being threatened by their enemies. And the Lord, uh, in the name of the Lord, uh, he, he, they will be cut off. Now, they haven't been cut off in 2018, but it, using using I will speaks of the future. So I'm wondering if 118 just has that flavor that in the near future, very near future, uh, all the nations that are surrounding you, I'm going to take care of them. Okay, so let me end it there, folks. I just want to say, too, for those who are listening in who are on the fence or have not put their trust in the trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time to do it, folks. Whether you agree with this video or not, things that are going on in this world are concerning to say the least. I believe time is short. Get yourself right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on Jesus as the Son of God who died on the cross for your sins um, and rose again three days later, proving that everything he said about himself is true. And he's coming up. he's coming back very soon. Trust in him for your salvation. Trust in him for the forgiveness of your sins. Trust in him uh, to, to get you through every day. You, ha you have an open invitation to have a relationship with him. And it's the greatest decision that you could ever make. Anyways, I look forward to making the last video, which will obviously address is Psalms 119 uh, and, and the next seven Psalms or so, Psalm 2020, and so our referring to indicating that this is the tribulation period should be an interesting video i look forward to bringing that to you and um, i hope that you you tune in and if not uh that's okay too anytime you tune into this channel it's uh you're welcome here we love having you but if if you don't like it give me a thumbs down that's you know, or, or say something in the comment section. If you do like this, these videos, I appreciate thumbs up. I appreciate your comments. But anyways, I hope to see you all here, there, or in the air. God bless you.